Well, hey friends, Roger here. And uh, well, this is day two of the Gay Lit Readathon. And so far, I'm off to a good start. The first day I read an entire book. I read uh, Rainbow Boys by Alex Sanchez. And I really, really enjoyed this book. And I read it once about uh, 20 years ago when it first came out. And I really didn't remember too much about it. But I did remember that it did affect me in a big way back then when I first read it. And how cool is it to have Matt Bomer on the cover uh, before he was famous? So this is a, so this story follows three senior high school boys. You have Jason, Nelson, and Kyle. So Jason is kind of the jock who has a girlfriend, but he's been thinking a lot about boys recently. Kyle is the nerd, very intelligent, who's on the swim team. And then Nelson is the only one of the boys who's out. And he's out and proud and, of course, being bullied at school. So I do have to say that we do have kind of the cliches here. We have the jock, the nerd, and the queen, I guess. For its time, I guess that's the way things were. You don't quite see that so much these days as people tend to step back from these cliches. But when I, when I first started reading this book, I was afraid that it was going to turn out to be a one huge love triangle because Kyle has a crush on Jason, Nelson has a crush on Kyle, and Jason has been thinking about Kyle more and more. So I thought this was going to turn into a stupid love triangle. And I say stupid because I just personally hate love triangles. And there was that aspect in the story a little bit, for, but for the most part, the story did focus on other things. And as a whole, I thought it did an excellent job at depicting the challenges of being a gay teen in a somewhat bigoted high school. And this book was written in uh, 2001. I do, but I, I keep forgetting, but I think it was 2001. Yeah, copyright 2001. So it's a little bit dated, a tad dated, you know, telephone ringing in the living room and uh, some outdated expressions. But I still feel that it's quite relevant today as it shows nicely what a lot of teens still have to go through. And the book delves into a lot of themes which could be relevant to a teen, such as uh, bullying, uh, homophobia, alcoholic parents, first love, uh, potential abuse, HIV and AIDS, and dating. But what I most got, the feeling that I most got from this book was this feeling of innocence as we're, we're kind of privy to one of the characters' first loves and first sexual experiences. And by the way, all the sex is pretty much off page. So in this way, it's appropriate uh, for youngsters. So at the, uh, though at its time it was considered quite progressive and actually this did make a few banned book lists. Now, since then, a lot of excellent books have come out for young adults, of young gay adults, such as uh, Dante and Aristotle, Discover the Secrets of the Universe, uh, Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda, just uh, those two just come to mind. But there's a tons of them out now. But I still think that this book has a relevant place in uh, young adult gay literature because it illustrates nicely the uh, challenges that high school students, gay high school students, go through today. And though things are a lot better these days than they were 20 years ago, or when I went to high school, when I went to high school, nobody was out. It was, uh, things were quite uh, repressive back in those days. But yeah, so things are a little bit better now. But these concerns and this bullying and derogatory comments, etc., still exist today. So all in all, I really enjoyed Rainbow Boys, and it was fun, fun read. And I mentioned in my... TBR video that I have the uh, second and third books in the series as well. I don't know if I'll get to them this month, but I do plan on picking them up now that I read this one. And this is a really fast read. It's only like not, not much more than 200 pages. It's, uh, what is it? At 230 pages. So yeah. So yeah, really a fast read. So a book that I think I'm going to read next for this readathon is the Double Feature book, which is book three of the Russell Middle book series. So I'm going to read that one next, and I will check in later on. Bye.
Well, hey friends, Roger here. I'm just checking in for the Aquarius Readathon, and I'm on. This is day three of the Readathon, and I haven't read anything yet today. I'm still in the middle of my work day. But uh, yesterday, I started reading the second book for the Readathon, which was the third book in the Russell Middle Book series, uh, which was a double feature. And the first book is entitled. Attack of the Soul-Sucking Brain Zombies. And of course, the big question is, what in the hell is a brain zombie? And we still haven't learned what it is yet. But, uh, but yeah, so this follows Russell Middlebrook and uh, stories again is told from his point of view. And him and his friends, uh, Min, Gunner, and then Gunner's girlfriend, are all, all signed up to be extras in a zombie movie that's playing in town. And this is the name of the zombie movie, The Attack of the Soul-Sucking Brain Zombies. So what we've learned so far is that Russell has a new boyfriend named Otto who lives 800 miles away. So, and I think he met him at summer camp, so it's a major long distance relationship. But there's a wrench in the works is that Kevin, his ex, and who we met in the first book, has made it quite clear that he wants Russell back. And uh, Russell suspects uh, that he even signed up to be an extra in the zombie movie just as a way of getting close to uh, Russell and uh, try to seduce him back. So now Russell is kind of torn. He feels that he's really in love with, with Otto, his long distance boyfriend. So now he's torn. Should he stay with Otto and try to make the uh, long distance relationship work? Or should he get back together with Kevin? So I imagine this is going to start uh, playing out in the pages. And also there was a, let me just say that one of the characters ended up coming out to his parents accidentally and things did not go very well. And that's uh, all I'm at right now. So I will check in once I've read a little bit more and uh, I should be able to get to it tonight. So I mentioned I'm, day, I'm at day three, so it's not doing too badly. I got five books total. So can I read four more books in four more days? We'll see. I shouldn't be too bad though because I did deliberately choose uh, thinner books. Although I don't know how long the group read book is, but the um, Heartstoppers graphic novel I should be able to get through easily in a day. And then the middle grade book, which was totally Joe, should be able to get to, because that's really uh, tiny, so I should be able to get through that. So yeah, so, I really, the, so the big ones are going to be the Russell Middlebrook book and then the group read. But I will give it my darndest and we'll see how it goes. So I'll check it again later. Bye. Well, hey friends, just checking in with the Queer Lit Readathon. So I finished the double feature, which was actually two books in one, or I should say two parts in one. Uh, the first part was called The Attack of the Soul-Sucking Brain Zombies. The second one was Bride of the Soul-Sucking Brain Zombies. So I mentioned that there was some drama around Russell, Russell Middlebrook, who the story follows, and his ex-boyfriend who wants him back. And then I mentioned he also has a current boyfriend, Otto, who lives 800 miles away. So yes, Kevin is definitely trying to seduce Russell and get him back. But all is not as it seems with Kevin, and we learn some more of that later on where there's a huge confrontation. So uh, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this first part a lot. Lots of boyfriend drama, relationship drama. Um, Plus the interesting aspect of all the kids starring in this zombie movie at, uh, taking place at a local high school. Or oh, is it an abandoned high school? I don't recall. But uh, it's a lot of fun and I really enjoyed the book. So then we move on to the second part. And this is actually told by, from Min's point of view, which is uh, one of Russell's friends who uh, she's also by. So what's interesting is that we get the story, the exact same story, from her perspective. So we get a little bit of her drama as well. Uh, there's a girl that she meets who's uh, another girl who's starring in the zombie movie. And the girl brings with her some challenging aspects, I'll just say that. So Min has to decide whether or not to pursue a relationship with this person. Because as with anybody, there are pros and then there are cons. So she has to decide whether the uh, pros outweigh the cons or vice versa. 
So, and we also get some of uh, Russell's drama from Min's point of view. And what's interesting is that Min and Russell, they've each had a different perspective on it. They've each engaged with different conversations with different people. And all this comes to pl into play. So we learn a lot more about the situation between Russell, Kevin, and Otto from Min's point of view. So yes, this is really, really a fun book and I uh, enjoyed it. But then again, I enjoyed all of the Russell Middlebrook uh, books, The uh, Geography Club and Order of the Poison Oak. And I don't remember the name of the fourth one. It has something to, I know it has Elephant in the title, that's all I knew, but I definitely plan on reading that. So yeah, Brent Hardinger double feature. Very fun read, and I'm glad I read it for this readathon. So the next book I decided that I'm going to tackle is the uh, Heartstopper book by Alice Oseman, and that takes care of the graphic novel requirement of the readathon. So I will check back once I've read that. So hey friends, I'm just checking in with the Queer Lit Readathon, and I finished yet another book on my TBR, and that was Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. So I actually bought these a long time ago. Well, not these, this one, I should say, quite a while ago. And this was uh, book one in the series, and it's a three-book series as of now. And I also purchased book two and three just recently. Now, as far as I know, book two and three are not yet available in the United States. I actually bought them, purchased them from the book depository which is based in the UK, I do believe, and so that's how I ordered them. So if you're interested in the other two, you'll probably have to order them from there or wait until they're released in the US. Whatever that may be, who knows? So, Heartstoppers, I absolutely loved this graphic novel. And it's a very, very fast read, and I, and I really, really enjoyed the art. And I guess this is taken from a Tumblr comic that Alice Oseman maintained. And uh, she took all the uh, panels from there and they ended up uh, printing it into a book. So I'm not sure how much you can read of it on her site, but it is out there from what I understand. And actually, I think she has her website at the very end of the book, so you can check it out. Yeah, so it was on Tumblr and Tapas, T-A-P-A-S. I'm not really sure what that is. I know it has an app, though I've, I've, I've come across the name of the app, but yeah. By, so anyway, this was just a super, super sweet book about two boys at school who uh, end up falling in love, I guess. So this story follows Nick, a boy who's in level 10 at school, and this takes place in the UK. So I'm not sure how about the equivalent of the levels are compared to the United States uh, high school levels. So he is in level 10 and he ends up sitting next to a boy who is in 11, level 11 named Nick. So the two boys develop a friendship and, uh, and by the way, Charlie is gay and he's out at the school where Nick is supposedly straight. So Charlie and Nick develop a really close friendship and they uh, find themselves pretty much spending all of their time together and Charlie ends up falling in love with Nick or he's developing very, very strong feelings for Nick. And uh, he, so he's kind of berating himself for falling in love with a straight boy because uh, that never ends well. But the question remains is, is Nick as straight as Charlie thinks he is? So uh, but that is the question. And I will say that this book ends on kind of a cliffhanger. So if I didn't already own the other two books, I might have been pissed. But uh, so I'm just going to dive right into the second book to see uh, how it turns out. But yeah, like I mentioned, a super, super sweet story about two boys who enter into this relationship. And, uh, and you know, this is exactly the kind of book that I needed right now. Something light fluffy and sweet. And this book definitely met those criteria. So Heartstopper, yeah, you know, I really can't say too much more without giving anything away because the, the fun of it is, uh, is reading it. But uh, you know, it is a, it's a fast read and a sweet story. So that is Heartstopper. So the next book I think I'm going to dive into is the group read, which I can't remember what the name of it offhand. And you know, I haven't even purchased, oh, I did purchase it the other day. 
That's right. I purchased it from Amazon uh, Kindle ebook because otherwise I wouldn't be able to get it in time for the readathon. So I'll be reading the group read next. And after that, there's only one book remaining, and that is the middle grade book, uh, Totally Joe. So I think I'm going to be able to read all of the books on my TBR for this readathon. So <laughs> yay me. So of course, I shouldn't count my chickens, right? So I will check in after I've delved into the next book. Okay, so I'm checking in for the readathon, and I just finished the group read, which is called This Is What It Feels Like by Rebecca Barrow. And uh, though I really love the book, I am not crazy about the title. For some reason, I cannot remember that title for longer than five minutes. So I would definitely award this book as the least memorable title. But the story itself was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. And it follows three teen girls. We have Jules, Dia, and Hannah. And they, they used to be best friends. And they were actually in a band together. They formed their own band. And were quite talented and rather successful. But then at some point, their lives all fell apart. Dia became pregnant. Hannah delved deeper and deeper into alcoholism to the point where she hit rock bottom. And there was also another horrific event in the lives of one of the band members that pretty much devastated her for quite some time. Oh, and then uh, Jules, the lesbian gal, is also kind of suffering from low self-esteem and feels that she's just not worthy of love and that she'll never be able to find a girl who loves her. So the band broke up and Dia and Jules remained friends but are now estranged from Hannah. Um, when Hannah was going through her severe alcoholism phase, and refused all help, they uh, they both cut ties with her. And so it's been like, I think, close to two years since they've spoken. So as you can imagine, and if something occurs which brings them back together, and it's kind of interesting watching them try to glue the pieces back together and try to discover or try to determine how they now fit into this new dynamic. This is basically a coming of age story that follows three teenage girls. And it's a story about friendship, music, family, uh, love, maybe a tad of betrayal and definitely some heartbreak thrown in. But it's also about choosing yourself and standing up for yourself, which to me ended up being a very powerful message in this story. As for the characters, I liked all of them, and they were all so different. I enjoyed reading their backstories and seeing how they got from the from the uh, point in the past to where they are now in the future. The only thing uh, that I found a little bit odd about the story, but there were some, and the story is told it alternates between all the different points of view. What I found odd was that there's a fourth point of view from one of the boyfriends of the girls. I should say one of the former boyfriends of the girls, which just kind of felt out of place. And, uh, and I'm not really sure that I saw the purpose in this person's point of view. But they didn't really, it didn't drag down the story or anything. I just thought it just struck me as kind of odd and just didn't seem to fit in with the rest of the uh, points of view. But that being said, I did enjoy the story. I thought it was really, really well done. And there's also great representation in the book. The girls are uh, themselves are African American, and yes, I do recall one of them referring to themselves as three black girls. So uh, yeah, so they are African American. We also have LGBT representation, as I mentioned. Um, Jules is a lesbian, and also um, teen pregnancy. But uh, yeah, a really really good book. And also a very moving book, as it did bring me to tears a little bit toward the end of the book when it all came together. But yes, nicely done uh, story, and I really enjoyed it. So I only have one more book remaining for this readathon, and I think I have it here. I do. That was uh, Totally Joe by James Howe, and this is the middle grade LGBTQ plus book which I'm really looking forward to reading. So I'm going to try to, well, I, f I actually finished the group read today. I gave myself a couple hour break and then I'm probably going to delve into this one. Given that tomorrow is the last day of the readathon, so I need to get to this. But it's only like a hundred, well, it's a hundred and, 
uh, almost 200 pages. But I'm thinking it's going to be a fast read. So that was, uh, what was the name of the book? <laughs> that is, this is what it feels like. I meant, as I mentioned, I cannot remember the name of that title for some reason. But uh, yeah, very good read, a good choice for the group read, I thought. So I'll check in with you once I finish Totally Joe. Well, I did it. I managed to read all of the books in the Queer Lit Readathon. I finished my last book yesterday, which was Totally Joe, which is by James Howe. So this was such a fun book. And I think I mentioned that this is the first LGBTQ plus middle grade book that I have read. And this particular book is actually the second in a series, the Misfits series. But it can be read as a standalone. So as far as a group of friends and each book is told from their particular point of view. And this book is told from the point of view of Joe Bunch. An optimistic, uh, quirky 12-year-old boy who has been given the assignment to write his alpha biography, that is to say, his story from A to Z, which Joe writes in diary format. So things get kind of interesting once he gets to C, which uh, stands for Colin Briggs, Joe's Secret Boyfriend. So through the course of the book, Joe works from A to Z, and in the process, bears his soul to the pages. And we follow him throughout the year as he comes out to his pages parents gets his first boyfriend all the while navigating the uh, tr somewhat tricky waters of middle school and uh, it's also during this time that uh he realizes that he's gay he comes out on the pages and attempts to try to figure out what that means for him and for his life so what we do what we get to do then is to spirit to experience firsthand what life is like for an out 12 year old boy and the issues and challenges that he faces as well as the joys and delights that he experiences as well. It really helped that Joe is really a, a bubbly and vibrant individual um, which added a, really added an element of fun to the book. But what was really beautiful about this story was the unconditional support and love that his parents and friends provided him. It was also kind of heartwarming to see the positive change that Joe, his parents, and his friends, and their parents were enabled to bring to the school and how they were able to, to change the atmosphere of the school and, and actually uh, take responsibility. And so that was really refreshing to see. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed this book. It was uh, so much fun. And you know what's funny is that I saw myself in these pages when I was 12 years old. And actually I was a lot like Joe. <laughs> Almost uncannily so. So in this way the book was kind of a nostalgic for me. And yes, I even had my first boyfriend at the age of 12. So um, that's another story perhaps I'll share for another time. So the reader song all in all was completely successful and I loved every book that I read. So the first book I read was Rainbow Boys. I would probably give that four and a half stars, maybe five. Next book was the, oh, double feature, <laughs> The Attack of the Soul Sucking Brain Zombies slash Bride of the Soul Sucking Brain Zombies, which was a lot of fun, as I, and I love the Russell uh, Middlebrook series. Though I, though I did like books one and two a little bit better, I did enjoy this one, and it was a lot of fun, and I would give this one four stars. The next book I read was Heartstopper, which I absolutely adored. And again, I'd, I would give this one probably five stars. And the, the group read, which was, again, I can never remember the name of this book. What the hell was it? I'm going to have to look. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> this is what it feels like by Rebecca Barrow. I don't know why I cannot remember the name of the book. It really is not a memorable title. So, yeah, again, like I mentioned, points off for a crappy title, but the book, the story itself was a five-star read for me. I really, really loved the, uh, the story and following uh, these three girls. 
as they tried to put back together what was torn asunder. And then the last but not least, Holy Joel, which I would probably give five stars to. So yeah, very successful read, and I'm so happy that I ended up loving all the books. So I'm still doing one more readathon this month, and that is the pride -thon, which consists of four books that I need to read during the month of June. And I've already read one of them, which is Rainbow Boys. I'm going to be reading three more, and I'm going to be doing a separate vlog for that. So keep your eye out for that one as well. So now I need to edit this video and get it published. Uh, I even managed to blog, to a vlog every day of the readathon, which is a good thing. You know, I've started a few vlogs in the past and uh, end up abandoning them. I, you know, I, I forget to I forget to record. I ended up getting busy. Um, work would take over, and next thing you know, four days had passed and haven't vlogged at all. So, so I'm happy that I was able to stick with this one. And I think the last one I did was the um, Read Your Gaze Readathon, which I did a year ago. So that is it for this vlog. I hope you enjoyed my little journey uh, through the Queer Lit Readathon, and I will talk to you all next time. Roger it out. Ooh.